Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. Mind Blast, Thought Steel, Shadow Word, Death, Baseline, and even Power Infusion. It's no question, Disc is one of the most broken healers right now. Well, today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Discipline Priests, exploring what's changed, just how good they're set to be before then going over races, conduits, covenants, soulbinds, and even legendaries, giving you all the information you need to set up your Discipline Priest from day one, ready for PvP. For all the information in this guide, we've consulted with multi-rank one Disc Priest King, Met. For more information on him or to catch him streaming, you can find him over at twitch.tv slash metx. Disc Priests as a whole are looking to be very similar in terms to design to that of Battle for Azeroth, acting essentially as a cross between a healer and a DPS, with the more damage you deal equating to more healing via the Atonement mechanic and spells like Purge the Wicked, Smite, Solace, and doing initial healing with Shadowmen, while still utilizing Power Word Shield as a way to keep up Atonements. This core design leaves them incredibly hard to balance. If their healing is too weak, they struggle to keep their teammates alive. If their damage is too strong, then you're essentially playing a triple DPS comp that can't die. Disc right now is in one of the best spots it's ever been, having incredibly high throughput, paired up with the potential to burst as hard as most DPS classes. Seemingly, Disapriest has it all. Good CC, high damage, great defensive and recovery options with Pain Suppression, Rapture, and Power Word Barrier, and the ability to bolster your team's damage with Dark Archangel with their only weakness being lack of mobility and being slightly frail when focused down by melee cleaves. So, what does Disc have that's new coming into the expansion? Well, the most notable changes are the additions of Mind Blast, Shadow Word Death, and Power Infusion, all now being baseline with Shadow Word Death having the same mechanics as Premonition, but now also doubling up as a big burst of damage on low health targets. In regards to new additions to talents, the only real noteworthy change is the addition of Thought Steel but we'll delve more into that later in the video, don't you worry. As of right now though, Disc well and truly has their place secured at the top of the healer food chain, even after suffering a few nerfs. And any nerfs they receive in regards to their damage, mana efficiency, or atonement healing will be well warranted, but we'll have to wait and see. If you've seen streams or played the beta yourself, what's your opinion on Discipline Priests? Do you think they're fine, or are they still in need of nerfs? Let us know in the comments below. But let's carry on with the video and jump straight into which race you should pick for Discipline Priest. Nothing has really changed when it comes to races in Shadowlands, meaning that if you're Alliance, you want to be human. If you're Horde, you want to be Orc. Well, Disc sadly can't be Orc, so for Horde, the best option is going to be Undead. Undead offers Will of the Forsaken. When compared to other races that a priest can be, this is just infinitely better. Just an extra way to get out of certain CC, putting your PvP trinket on a 30 second cooldown. And for Alliance, of course it's human. The Relentless Trinket paired up with every man for himself just poses to be too strong of an option to turn down, getting almost the best of both worlds. Night Elf can also be considered for the Alliance, but is generally just a far weaker option that requires very good usage to even get any value out of it at all. Alright, so with your race picked, let's take a look at the talent tree and discuss which talents you should pick for Arena. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Overall, there isn't too much change happening with the talent tree going into Shadowlands, with the only noticeable change being the addition of Spirit Shell instead of Luminous Barrier, but more on that later. On our first row, all three talents are actually viable. Castigation provides a middle ground of both damage and healing. Twist of Fate is a nice recovery mechanic, and then Schism is great offensively. All three of these have their place, and which one you pick will depend a lot on the circumstance. For example, Castigation is good for overall healing versus consistent damage comps. Twist of Fate is great against bursty teams, or teams with consistent mortal strike, where you'll need that extra boost to your healing. While Schism scales great with things like Dark Archangel and the new Covenant abilities to boost your burst if you need some added pressure. Overall though, a good pick and what you'll consistently play the most is Castigation, offering a healthy boost to damage and also throughput. Dropping down a row, there are two talents you'll consider using, either Body and Soul or Masochism. Body and Soul offers a consistent boost to movement speed on any targets you shield, so this is the standard pick, while Masochism can be taken versus double melees that may train you. On the level 45 row, it's Power Word Solace, no question. Higher damage, more mana regen, you'll want this 100% of the time. 
and the same goes for the level 60 rope. In 95% of situations, you'll want Psychic Voice for the shorter Fear CD, but Shining Force can be considered versus Shamans to knock out the Earthen Wall Totems or against Double Melee on certain maps. For our next row, again, Sins of the Many is the go-to, no questions. Although Shadow Covenant has received a minor rework, making it now buff your Shadow Spells, still, it's not quite worth considering. Then for the final two rows, Purge the Wicked and Lenience are without a doubt the go-to pickups. The newly added Spirit Shell sadly replaces your best CD in Rupture, so it's not quite viable in PvP. Alright, that's it for the talents. Let's now take a look at the PvP talents, as there have been a couple of changes. So here there is a lot of diversity and options that you can pick. The three main PvP talents that you should have as your default are Trinity, Dome of Light, and Dark Archangel. Trinity is something that you'll never want to swap out. It proves a significant boost to your healing as well as boosting the duration of your atonement, a must-have all the time. Dark Archangel is another one you'll rarely want to swap out. The power of this is unrivaled, providing yourself and all allies with atonement a 15% boost to their damage. This is amazing for setup-oriented comps that Disc excels in. Then, as your third talent, a good option is Dome of Light. In the current meta, where classes such as Sub Rogues, Wind Walkers, and MM Hunters deal immeasurable amounts of burst damage, this is a must have to counter that pressure. Okay, so there are, as mentioned, a few other options. First of all is Purification. This is such an underrated tool for Disc, giving you two charges of Dispel. This can be great defensively and offensively versus caster dot compositions or teams that rely heavily on CC. It's best swapped for Dome of Light, where you don't really need the added DR. Ultimate Radiance can be picked up and combined with Dome of Light and Trinity for a purely defensive setup, where you're really struggling to keep yourself or your team alive. Ideally, you want to restrain from using this and learn to heal without it, but it can be a good tool to counter sub rogues as you can use it to heal through Shadowy Duel. And then last up, we have a new addition. This new PvP talent is without a doubt one of the most broken abilities added with Shadowlands, Thought Steal. We dedicated an entire video to this ability, which I'll leave in the description, but basically this allows you to steal abilities like Polymorph, Fear, Vampiric Touch, or even Rejuvenation from your enemies and stop them using it in the process for 20 seconds. Thought still can be swapped out for either Dome or Dark Archangel in times where you'll get good use out of it. Alright, now let's move on to the new stuff added in Shadowlands. Covenants, Soulbinds, Conduits, and Legendary Items. Starting with Covenant Choice, there are four to choose from. Currently, once you've picked one, you are able to change, but if you want to return to a Covenant that you've left, you need to complete weekly quests. Beyond that, you'll be behind on Renown farming for that Covenant. Anyway, Discipline Priests have two options, Kyrian, which provides a good defensive in the File of Serenity, which is an empowered Hellstone, and Boon of the Ascended, a hard-hitting burst ability that can be combined with Schism. Although the weaknesses are is that there is a 3 minute cooldown and can just be line of sighted or CC. The second option is what we recommend and that's Venthyr. This covenant has much stronger soul binds which we'll get into shortly, as well as two powerful abilities in the form of door of shadows to cap close, follow up with CC or kiting enemies and then mind games them which does some great damage. It also provides a very annoying debuff to deal with making the targets heals do damage and damage do healing. They're both good choices, but unless something changes for Soulbinds, stick with Venthyr. Speaking of Soulbinds, they are another new addition. Once you choose your Covenant, you will get the opportunity to bind yourself to one of three NPCs within your Covenant, all of which provide passive abilities and giving you the ability to equip conduits. For Discipline and most classes as well, the best to go for right now is Nagia the Mistblade. Following this route, you'll be able to pick up three insanely strong passives. First is Fancy Footwork. This just provides you with a burst of movement speed after using your Door of Shadows. This is great for adding mobility to either Kite or Secure Psychic Screams. The other option is Agent of Chaos, but this has been nerfed in PvP and shares diminishing returns with Fear, so it's not too great for Priest in specific. The most impactful node is the Familiar Predaments though and the main reason that you want this Soulbind, as you gain 25% immunity to Lockouts, Snares, and Roots. With this having very limited mobility, this helps a ton. Not to mention being able to utilize multiple schools of magic, combined with this Soulbind, makes dealing with interrupts trivial. And lastly, the final pickup is Thrill Seeker. This is simply just a nice added boost to haste that you'll get after staying in combat for a short period. Okay, so we've got our Covenant, we have our Soulbind, now which conduits do we want to select? Conduits are put into three categories. 
These are Endurance, Finesse, and Potency. The route that we selected on our Soul Binds provides us with two Potency Conduits and with one Finesse and one Endurance. The first choice is for an Endurance Conduit, and for Priests, there are three viable ones, Translucent Image, Light's Inspiration, and Charitable Soul. Out of these three options, the best is Translucent Image. While not very significant, Translucent Image is recommended as it provides a 5% damage reduction on yourself when using Fade, which is off the global CD and doesn't cost mana. Then our next conduit is Finesse. For this, there are four options, Clear Mind, Power onto Others, Move with Grace, and Mental Recovery. A couple of these are viable. Clear Mind is nice for the reduced mana cost, but Disc doesn't really struggle with mana. Power onto Others is nice when you're playing with a caster who you consistently give power infusion to, and Mental Recovery can have some good uses as priests slack a slow. Our consultant, Matt, recommended picking up Mental Recovery just for the added utility, but if mana becomes an issue, this will likely change to Clear Mind. And then, with the route that we've picked up, we get the option to choose two potency conduits. Now, you can't pick the same one twice. The options available are Shattered Perceptions, Shining Radiance, Swift Penitence, Exaltation, and Pain Transformation. Out of these, the best option is Shattered Perceptions, which adds a huge buff to your Covenant ability, buffing its effects and length. Then, for your second potency conduit, you'll want to pick up Exaltation. This not only buffs Rapture, giving it increased duration, but also empowers the shields that you cast while the buff remains. So, this is what your Soulbind Tree and Conduits will look like. Now, our final section is again a new addition in Shadowlands, Legendaries. These are all working in PvP, and you can, as of now, only equip one at a time. For Discipline, there are four main spec legendaries, Clarity of Mind, Crystalline Reflection, Kiss of Death, and the Penitent One. The Penitent One, Clarity of Mind, and Kiss of Death all focus heavily around PvE healing, which is lucky because Crystalline Reflection is the strongest legendary for Disc by Miles. This is often one of your top sources of damage in Arena, giving your shields an ability to not only heal your target but also reflect part of their damage absorbed back to the attacker. The only drawback of this legendary is that in setup compositions, it has the potential to break CC, such as Polymorph or Blind. As a result, you may need to drop it in place of one of the two other options. First is the Twins of the Sun Priestess. This essentially gives you the ability to give a teammate power infusion while still reaping its benefit for yourself. This is great for playing setup compositions with mages where you can give them power infusion and both burst together, while the other option is more defensive. The Vault of the Heavens gives your Leap of Faith two charges and transforms it into a reverse grip, meaning that you can grip yourself to your teammates. This can be great for Z-axis maps or just against melee cleaves training you in general. So, picking between these three legendaries depends a lot on the matchup and composition, but all three have their place and are very strong. Overall, to quickly summarize, Disc is looking to be in an incredibly strong spot going into Shadowlands, having almost the same kit as BFA, just with some nice improvements, and without any further tuning, will go on to be the predominant healer without a doubt. But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more up-to-date Shadowlands content as it drops. We'll see you next time.